I'm Kirsten Wise, Extension Specialist for Field Crop Diseases at Purdue University. Hi, I'm Lauren Giesler, Extension Plant Pathologist at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Um, today we're going to spend some time talking about seedling diseases in soybeans and what we see uh, typically for symptoms and how to identify those and then what to do for management. So first of all, when we're looking at a soybean seedling disease, we're going to see low spots associated with our diseases that like higher moisture availability, like our pythiums and phytophthoras, or what we consider our water mold diseases. Pythium is caused by pythium species and is more common in cool, wet soils. Typically, pythium is one of the first seedling blights we see appear in soybeans. Phytophthora is also a seedling blight that's common in when we have wet conditions. Phytophthora usually infects when during warmer temperatures than pythium, and so this one we can often see a little later in the season. Our other two seedling blights are caused by true fungi, which are Fusarium and Rhizoctonia. Now these fungi infect under a wider range of conditions, um, wet to dry and warm to cool, and so these are two that can be very common in a lot of Indiana fields. It's very difficult to diagnose seedling blights in the field since some of the symptoms of the individual seedling blights may appear similar. So our next step in identifying our seedling disease problem would be to collect a sample and, and go get that field diagnosis confirmed in a diagnostic center or diagnostic lab that could use either molecular or serological or even culturing methods to confirm which pathogen we think is the cause of our problem. We've identified an area in the field where we have representative in one of these small pockets where we're seeing symptoms, really all stages of activity. So we've got some dead plants, uh, we've got some plants on the edge that are shorter or less vigorous growing than our healthy plants. So what I like to do is you know, include a, a few of those dead plants. You don't want to just include those though because many times those will have many other secondary fungi colonizing them. And I like to have three or four plants that are going to be reduced in vigor or show some symptoms, maybe those with cotyledon burning, uh, maybe some with some leaf wilting or rolling, or a larger plant with post-emergent damping off. And then I like to include at least one plant to be representative of what a good looking plant in that field looks like. Remember that that person doing that diagnosis is not going to know the growth stage of that field or how large a normal plant would look. So when we're digging plants up, you know, we're going to we're going to try to capture some soil around those individual plants so we can get its intact root system. And then we don't have to have all the soil with that, but we want to try to not tear away all of the, the root mass. So leaving some soil in the bag, that's going to be fine. And then what we're going to want to do with this is make sure that that sample, uh, we're going to keep it nice and cool. We're not going to want to let that clear plastic bag in the sun because that really gets hot. And put that in a cooler if you can, and if you have to, keep it in a refrigerator overnight, uh, and then get that to your diagnostic center or diagnostic lab for analysis. If you confirm seedling blights in your field, there are a few steps that you can take to minimize the impact of these diseases in the future. As plant pathologists, we compile a list of available seed treatments and their efficacy against certain organisms every year higher probability that you're going to have a stand problem or planting into cool soils. So early planting conditions many times are going to benefit from use of a seed treatment. When we're looking at heavy rains following after planting, that's many times where we'll see a, a significant stand problem. Compaction, high amounts of residue, these types of things can really be favorable for seedling disease. So if you find yourself in a situation where you've had a history of a soybean stand problem or you're planting in any of these conditions we've described, I'd surely recommend the proper seed treatment to get that soybean stand off to a great start.